All right, so we've set up the camera and we set up um, audio for it, and let's just uh, have a quick listen to it. So just real quick before we start, though, so it's the same thing. Uh, the USB is powering the unit. Uh, you will have audio and MIDI through USB as well, so it easily connects to your DAW. Uh, we have the stereo mini jack connected for the audio output. And so now here we go. go. So let's have a listen. And these are just some of the patterns that came in it. So we'll have a, we're on the square wave. Right off the bat, I can tell um, it looks like it programs just like the original 303. Um, the uh, same way with the 909. It, you know, it, there might be a, a little thing here or there, but for all intents and purposes, it, it looks like it programs like a, a 303. So, um, now, I personally never owned uh, a 303. Uh, I did get to work with them, and I used them on many tracks. But the one thing I always they always confused me back then was how to program it. There's a couple of different ways to do it. You've got the, the uh, I always like the step time because I, I always feel like, um, it, for me, I always got more happy accidents programming stuff uh, by step. And uh, you can, st you know, you can tap it in as well. Uh, but for me, I always liked programming in the step mode. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just see if it does work the same way. So we're going to put it in write mode. We're going to go to pattern bank number one. Um, I'm going to select pattern number one and hit clear. And again, we haven't even, I mean, we Correct showed you the manual, manual, but we haven't taken a look at how to, so we, there might be some mistakes and some hiccups here and there, but. So that should clear it, which it looks like it did. We will put it in pitch mode, and pitch yeah. mode is where you input the notes. So, oh, that's cool. So I'm stepping through, I don't hear the notes though. So I think from, uh, so we'll go into pitch mode, and this is where you enter the notes. And it's stepping through the notes, which is so you can actually see where you are, because I'm, I'm always so used to counting it in my head. Um, and so we've got the notes in here, and then we just need to program the time. So I'm just going to put straight 16th notes in here. That's where a lot of the charm came from. Oh, you yeah. Know, and, my, and I think they, they were just fun to program. Um, so let's go in and add some accents and some slides to it. So we'll go back into pitch mode and use the uh, right next button and go through all the, little, all the steps. And just cycle back around. So in the first one, we'll put an accent. All right, so you got to hold down the step while you put in the accent. So it's like the three. So go to the next one, hold down, we'll do two accents. And we'll do an octave up, slide it. Do another accent, do an octave down, slide it. Accent, accent, up, and accent, slide. Accent, up, slide, accent, accent. All right, so, so let me guess, you've programmed a TB303 before. Once or twice. And uh, something they've added in here um, is a distortion. It's got an overdrive and a delay in it. Um, yeah, so right up here at the top, you can see that on the camera, overdrive, and then you have your delay with your time and feedback. 
All right, so let's have a let's have a quick listen to the the story. I'm gonna put it back on the square wave. It's my personal. <laughs> still great um and so let's have a listen we'll take the overdrive off let's have a listen to a delay here so um, i'm going to turn up the feedback so it's, it's kind of sounds like a tape delay yeah that's immediately what i was thinking is very yeah kind of re201 yeah it's gonna be interesting to see if well, we can automate like, this stuff if there's like a an automatic tempo sync to it because that i mean you, you could go mad you know trying to get it yeah delays, trying to dial it know, in. especially you know take delays and stuff so. it's, yeah. the cinematic and ambient glitch guys are gonna like yeah. definitely get a kick out of this i mean it's got nitrous written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, I would love to see if there's a uh, there's going to be a uh, you know some other tempo sync stuff. So it looks like you've got your track uh, right, your track play. You've got all your uh, track and pattern groups. Um, let's see if the tuning does. things like we yeah. would be rocking a three or three and we would grab the tune knob by accident and, and then boom, wow. <laughs> and it just ruined it and we would spend the rest of the time trying to get the damn thing in tune um because before a show we would always take the three or threes and get a t guitar tuner and tune them up um but the you know some guys got to the point where they just started taking the tune knobs off and i i was always too paranoid <laughs> because i didn't want to lose the tune knobs so, right um but that's pretty that's pretty, that's pretty interesting the knobs feel pretty cool. Um, it, it, it's not metal. They're they're definitely plastic. Uh, yeah, but it, it it I mean they feel they feel solid. Again, you know? if you got Megan Fox fingers, you might have a little <laughs> bit of an issue, but uh, you know. Yeah. Um, use your use your pinky or something like that if you need but to. But yeah, the, I mean they, they they click hard. The buttons feel solid. Um, it's metal again, and uh, and it just looks cool. It, yeah, it's, it does. You know, it looks like the the original TB three hundred three, which All I right. think is great. So, we have one more thing that we want to show you. Uh, yes. So, all right. Just bring it right in, and so this is my 303. Um, it's a pretty one. This one was actually uh, I got rid of the ones I toured with a lot in the 90s, but uh, but I, I bought this uh, from a friend of mine, and he's um, the the guy who actually pro, uh, built the engine sequencer, mm -hmm. and uh, he also does the uh, the Quicksilver mods for the 303s and stuff. So he puts MIDI on them and he reprograms the CPUs. But uh, this one's stock. Um, and let's just, uh, let's program the same pattern into it and, and um, have it do a quick little comparison. And, now, it, yeah, and in no way, we're again, we're not trying to like say, this is better than that one. We just want to see like how close it can, you know, get to it. I think so, so far, far it sounds pretty good. It, yeah, so far it, it is not. And broken. you're, and again, you're um, more of a hardcore 303 guy, so. So I'm going to go in here, and again, it, it programs just like a regular 303. So I'm going to take, I'm going to bank one, pattern right, pattern one, and clear the pattern so I don't have anything. And I'm just going to uh, program 16th notes like I did. Two, three, oops, I got to go back. I've already messed it up. Back here. Um, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16. All right, so and then I'm just going to step through all of that. Okay. So we're going to put the um, as close as possible. So let's do the same thing on this one. We'll go to we bank one, to pattern center. right. And I'm going to clear this pattern. And we're going to do F. Uh, we're going to back to pitch mode. Okay. Go and just put in all 16th notes. Again, like I, I've 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 gone in and I've kind of tweaked this filter a little bit to my liking because you can go in and like all the three oh threes I've had I think four or five of them and they've all sounded different. Um, yeah. And and especially when it comes to the filter, this I've kind of dialed it in to be more like the filter from another three oh three that I had that I really liked. Um, so So that right there yeah. we have to account yeah. you know, and give it a little bit of leeway with that. That's 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 pretty close there. Um, I think the the original might have a little bit more on the low end. Yeah. Um, but but as you start to close the filter on here, it starts to kind of compensate for that a little bit. At yeah. least that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. So let's take up the the filters a bit here. And all the way up. So this one's a bit chirpier. Turn the envelope, uh, cut up all the way down so the, the envelope is modulating everything and the resonance all the way up. This one's just a little. So right now this is the TV03 playing. It's, you know, this one has been t tweaked a little bit, right. um, but, you know, if you've got two of them right next to each other, I think one of the things that I'm noticing right off the bat is the, is the pitch is really stable on this. Because um, 303, like 303s can be kind of, kind of wonky, and again, it's, you know, uh, the, the tuning uh, can be kind of problematic on these. Uh, but I think, you know, right off the bat, they're, they're close. They're you know, close. The, they're, the the original TV three hundred three to my ears has a little bit more of the low end, um, and again that waveform at certain points where you have the cutoff, you know, definitely has a different tone to it. Yeah, the resonance is a bit different. But again, you you know you get ten three hundred threes that you know they they will all sound different. Um, 
So let's add in, let's add in um, so I'm going to go through these and uh, let's add in some pitch variations to it. Let's go back to pitch mode. First one, we're going to do an octave up with an accent, and then second, we've got to slide. It's got that real glue, like that gluey, you know, kind of thing. Well, it's, it's, I mean, the other, one of the things that I do find interesting about this is that, um, it, I mean, it's close. And, and, and again, let's, let's be realistic here. Uh, the price differences between these things. Yeah, that's where we really have to take it back down. You yeah, know, I mean. To get a mint condition. TB303 is in excess of three grand. Yeah, they're getting back up there. Um, I've seen some almost hitting four grand, like that are like really, really good condition. Well, I mean, this one would probably get there, but I think that um, a lot of, you know, some of the, some, my older ones, I mean, like the, the, the paint has been worn off around the knobs and you can't really see what the hell it does, but, uh, you know, they definitely get looser and they kind of have a more organic feel to it. But since this is all software, Mm -hmm. And this ACB, I'm willing to bet that there's going to be more versions of this coming out because, like, I wouldn't be shocked if there's to be like a Devilfish version. It's very know? possible. I mean, I was told, you know, from our friends at Roland that there are some updates coming, obviously, to add some more things to it. Um, so, you know, again, it could be some stuff that's maybe hasn't uh, been implemented just yet. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon, you know, with no. Roland when, when they have the prototypes and the first set of you know, products and everything that it's not 100% complete yet. And that's not a bad thing. It's just mm -hmm. the guys are developing and the, you know, they're still developing the software, but they're trying to get it out on time. And then there'll be an update that will add some additional features. And, you know, so I, again, I, I think I'm in 100%, you know, agreeance with you and that we'll probably see some updates, mm -hmm. you know, for this some firmware updates that will probably add a couple of features and things. And maybe some things that will tweak the overdrive a little bit, you know, a certain way. Uh, it's it's I, all know, possible. I, I'm willing to bet, you know, if we cracked open the manual, because there are different um, delay times and stuff that you mm -hmm. can do, like in the, in the JUSX and some of the other effects. I'm willing to bet that that same feature is, is in here, um, where it's got a digital delay locked into it. Um, again, we haven't cracked open the manual because we wanted to see if, you know, if yeah, just if, if coming straight forward and. Yeah, I mean, if, if you knew it. the originals, could you immediately start programming these? And the answer is yes. yes. Um, it, there's nothing, you know, uh, other than, you know, a few things a little out of place here, like the tempo button on, on the Real 303, you've got a, a tempo uh, uh, knob over here. So that's a bit different. The, the waveform selector is right there in the front, and it's, it's on the back out here. The CV and gates are up, up on the top. And the thing that I do like about this is it's got a trigger in. Um, which is which is pretty happening. So you know, one of my favorite things to do is actually um, take the CV gate out of this 303 and then plug it into a 101, 101. or something else. We've got another 202 and some other things. Um, but uh, that's one of my favorite things is using the 303 sequencer to drive other stuff. And yeah. um, that that's 90% of this um, is the sequencer in it. And um, you know the sound, obviously, but you can you can cop different you know three or three kind of tones from other gear, but the sequencer is what makes this really magical. It looks like they've done the, a pretty good job of port porting so it. So your uh, so what's your overall summary? My overall summary is I think you know for the money, um, nothing else touches it. You know. Um, I think it's got a lot of potential, and I think like anything, you know, once you're done processing it and, and you know putting it in a mix, um, yeah. you'll be fine. But 
the fun factor is still there. You know? Yeah, and, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things is, is it fun? Is mm -hmm. it fun to play with? Can you get close to the sound? And is it a, uh, an affordable price range that most people can get into? And the answer yeah. is yes, yes to all of that. Yes. It's fun. It's built pretty well. Um, you know, it's got some really cool features. It's pretty true to the original in terms of how you program it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the price point, you just, you really just can't beat it. Uh, there's a lot of TB303 clones out there, but you're looking in excess of 800 to 1,000 to 1,200 US mm -hmm. dollars uh, for one of those good clones. Mm -hmm. If you want an original TB303, you're looking at three grand and up. Um, you know, and they vary depending on how well they've been kept or, or whatnot. So I think, you know, again, with the TB03 and the boutique line, again, you're looking under $400. Um, and you pretty much have all of the functionality there. The sound is there. Mm -hmm. And I think, once, again, like you said, once you get it into the mix and you're processing things, you know, I think it's going to do, do the job just fine. You yeah. have the CV gate and trigger ends. It's going to make it more interesting for guys with modules and, you know, tying this all in with that stuff. Um, so Yeah, and I bet it's going to be, you know, a bit more reliable. Uh, and I can, you know, I would definitely, even... You know, even some of the clones, I would take this over some of the clones. Oh, yeah. Um, and you definitely don't have to have your guitar tuner. No. With you. <laughs> you don't. No. Um, that's just, yeah, that, that's always, you know, frustrating. But I think, yeah, I, I mean, congratulations, Roland. I mean, you did a good job, and this is a product that we, you know, we were wanting for a long time. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, it's not analog, it is digital. Yes. But I think. It uses uh, the, uh, again, the ACB technology, the analog circuit uh, board modeling. Yeah, and, and there's nothing else on the market even close to this. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. like, you know, people are asking, well, what's the difference with, you know, the IRA line with the TB3? And I got to tell you, uh, I think this TB03 smokes the TB3 on the IRA line well, in, in, I, in tone. Yeah, again, I think, you know, it's there's the, there's a difference. When, I think. when they went through the process of the IRA line and they wanted to, like, kind of reimagine a few things. Yeah. I think they did. I think they they nailed it with the TRA, with the with the, the way yeah. the effects are in there and the way they've kind of integrated it. It feels it feels comfortable, but it's got some new stuff. On the on the TB3, I think they reimagined a little too much. Too much. And because it it really like it didn't give you any resem it didn't have any resemblance at all. Not you know, really. To no. the to the TB303, it yeah. was really far off. At least with the TR8, immediately you saw the color. Yeah. you know pads and everything and it, it had that look you know so it's like okay i get it yeah with the tv3 it was like yeah i i, I remember yeah off. i remember the first time seeing it we were i know like, mm -hmm. we were both looking at it like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this I, this is good this is good yeah um, this is what it should have been and you know hey they did it it's here again it'll be available at the end of september uh so you'll be able to uh to purchase one again we don't have exact pricing map pricing on that just yet but it will be available at the end of the september which is great uh, so overall, again, congratulations, Roland. Really good job on this. Um, I'm sure there's more updates to come with it. Um, make sure you stay subscribed to the ADSR YouTube channel because we do have another video coming with go. another cool product that they just sent us, and that'll be up next. Yay! Something very cool. Awesome. So thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for watching.